Bob, to understand consciousness, we have to understand it from an evolutionary perspective. Why did it emerge? What is it about the internal feeling and sense of quality, the, 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 the redness of red, the smells, the feeling of consciousness? Why was that important? Why did that select for? So I suspect that consciousness arose, like everything else in evolution, quite by accident. And the question is, after it came here, what could it do? And I make that statement at the start because I think most people talk about consciousness as having been necessary for us to become who we are. My suspicion is that this is something that evolved at its very beginning that helped, and so we kept it, and that there might have been a better than 50-50 chance that evolution would have gone along just fine without ever coming up with it. So what it did is it gave us an advantage. And it seems that it gives us two advantages. One is it seems to facilitate communication. Communication seems very much, at least in primates and even in lower animals, we imagine it as driven by conscious expression and by intent. And the other thing it seems to do is give us the ability to choose and pick what our brain process is. So we can choose to think about something, which is something that it's harder to imagine a brain doing without some sort of consciousness. We have attention that we can focus. We can choose to ignore things. Now, whether we needed to evolve consciousness to do that, because we can imagine a computer or a completely non-sentient brain doing all those things isn't the issue. The issue is that consciousness evolved and that worked better than other systems that didn't have consciousness. So somehow, either consciousness or those brain systems that inevitably produce consciousness, those things gave us this ability to, to both focus our attention and also to think broadly and diffusely and creatively. And the fact that consciousness is so complex and sophisticated at this point suggests to me that it wasn't just something that popped and had to be there for the brain function and then kept going. Because it's unclear to me why then you would have this sophistication of brain function becoming so much greater in parallel with the brain function. So my guess actually, with no way even to begin to understand how to ask the question, is that the consciousness per se is giving us some of this potential to, to understand, to interact with our world in ways that a, a non-sentient brain just can't do. Dreaming is uh, an area that you've worked on a great deal, and that certainly is an altered state of consciousness, uh, and that also evolved as part of the process. Uh, does that give us any additional clues uh, to the evolution of consciousness? Well, insofar as dreaming is an altered state of consciousness, it is interesting because of the two things I've talked about, sort of this focused attention to direct action function of consciousness, and this um, ability to reflect and to think about and to search our minds for new connections and new ways to think about things. We do both of those when we're awake. When we're asleep and dreaming, we're only doing the second. We, we, in fact, even our dreaming self, we have very little conscious control. The, the person who we think we are in the dream doesn't have much control over his own actions, even in the dream, although obviously we could imagine when we're awake our imagined selves doing anything we want to imagine. In our dreams, we can't. It seems to be controlled from outside of that. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the dreaming brain, and perhaps the sleeping brain in general, is more focused on that sort of integrative and abstractive function of seeing how things fit together than on taking that integrated information and using it to direct behavior. Which is also a, a, a fitness enhancer. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A brain that only could learn and couldn't alter the memories, that couldn't figure out where to use the memories. You know, we say that Dan Schachter say, says memories about the future, not about the past. It's so that if we're in a similar situation in the future, we can behave better 
because we remember how we acted last time. But it's never the same situation. It's always similar. And how similar it has to be and what features are relevant is something that we only extract from that original memory slowly over time. That's what makes us fit. So if dreaming is that important, could it be the case that dreaming and consciousness sort of had a co-evolutionary development? That it, it, it could be that important. It is even imaginable that dream consciousness evolved first. <laughs> Spoken as a true dream researcher. Spoken as a dream researcher. And the frustrating thing is we have no way to even begin to untangle whether that's true or not until we finally come to understand the biological basis of consciousness and its altered form dreaming. And then we can go back and look in evolution and see if those things developed over different time courses. But we just, ask me again in a thousand years.